Good morning. Happy Thursday. I have neuro coffee in hand and it is perfect. Uh, in university where I go, we mm -hmm. are getting taught these uh, traditional methods of uh, stretching and uh, strengthening and other methods. And recently uh, we, uh, we got into the theme of uh, <laughs> levers, like uh, huh? body levers, yeah. And I remember, I think in one of your videos, uh, you said that only dead guys have levers. Yeah. So can you expand on that a little bit? Only dead guys have levers. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's an old, that's like a dad joke. Um, <clears throat> okay. So what constitutes a lever? Um, so what, what, what do you have to have? <clears throat> well, you have to have like a point of movement, I guess. And um, so you need a, <clears throat> you need a stick and a fulcrum, right? I guess that's what you call it, yeah. So you need a fulcrum. That's, it's, if you don't have a fulcrum, you don't have a lever. Okay. Can you explain the fulcrum part? I <clears throat> yeah, so I got a rock that I want to move, yeah. okay? Yeah. I take my stick, I jam it underneath the rock. There's got to be another rock that I pull the stick down on that pops yeah. this, the rock up, okay? Yeah. So if you're on a teeter-totter, do they do they have teeter-totters at the playground? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Awesome. So the, the, the fixed point in the middle is the fulcrum. Okay, okay? good. Gotcha. All right, so you got to have a fulcrum. So that's the rule. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's not a lever. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> that means that my stick that I'm using as my lever has to touch and put pressure on the fulcrum. Okay. Yep. That never happens in a in a living human being with uh, normal, healthy joints. Bones don't touch. If bones don't touch. You cannot have a lever. <clears throat> okay. The perception is that bones do touch when we move and they don't. Because if they did, there would be a tremendous amount of heat that would have to be released with movement. That heat and pressure would destroy the cartilage in the bones very quickly, okay? Um, there is also arguably the most extreme amount of pain associated with such a thing. Having experienced it firsthand, so if, you get, if you have bony contact between two yeah. bones as the joint moves, it hurts a lot, okay? So you don't ever want that. There's always a space. There's always a fluid space in a joint that like that synovial joints, okay? Um, the, the synovial fluid, okay, is always between the bones. And there's, there's, there's decent evidence for this actually. Um, I wanna say it's a Japanese study that, that it was, and it was done in 1980 and they took, um, um, <clears throat> fresh cadaver joints, like the joints, they just took them, like, like took a hip joint, cut it out of the, of the cadaver and tried to approximate the bones, keeping the joint intact and they could not make them touch. Okay. And there's several mechanisms that are in play to prevent them from touching. Um, and so if they don't touch, there's no fulcrum. If there's no fulcrum, then there's no lever. If there's no levers, then you're probably alive and healthy. Um, so why do they call them levers, like in the tradition? Because they use dead guys as an example. Okay, that makes sense. Because <laughs> they, so the, here's the thing. <clears throat> um, have you ever seen a cadaver? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, how well do they walk? Not at all. Not at all. They roll over? 
if you push them over, I guess. <laughs> Do they breathe? No. 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 Are they dry? Yes. Yes. Every once in a while, you get an intact you get an intact joint, and you can you can pop it. But uh, but yeah, generally speaking, they 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 are not they are not living human beings, and therefore they have different rules, right? Yeah. Because they don't move. They're they they're essentially doing nothing. They're just hanging out. And but we can use them as a representation to find stuff, which is really interesting. We can get some relationships in regards to how things might move. But the reality is, is that they're not human, they're dead, and therefore they have different rules, right? And so they take stuff apart and they look at the dry representations and they go, look, it's a class two lever, right? Yep. And then they go, well, that makes total sense because if you look at the way that it moves through respect, what, what's the, what's uh, the elbow? Is that, is that a class three? Is that? A, <laughs> I don't learn this. Yeah, I think I, I think like the ankle is supposed to be like a class two. Yeah, because it has to do with the it has to do with the with the moment arm and the the position of the fulcrum and then the position of the load, right? Yep. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Okay. Now, here's here's the thing. Don't try to start this argument in school. Okay, because well, you won't win. You won't win. Yep. Because if you try to answer this. On, correctly on the test at school, you'll get the answer wrong. Yeah. Okay, let them have their way. Understand, understand their rules that they want you to learn and then learn reality. That makes you much stronger because now you can argue favorably for reality, right? With a legitimate argument versus just going, oh, but it's not leopards. And then they'll say, well, how can you say that? You go, well, because bones don't touch. And you say, well, what, how, how, where's your evidence for this? You go, 1980, Japanese study, blah, 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 blah. Bill said, don't, don't, <laughs> use, don't use me as a reference. <laughs> Please don't use me. I really don't want that phone call. <laughs>